Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Timothy Lee, and I'm a research analyst at Red Cloud Securities. I am delighted to host a Red Cloud webinar on nickel exploration today. We will hear from Paul Sobey, uh, CEO of Churchill Resources. During today's webinar, he will provide an overview and outlook. Uh, then we will take questions. You can type your questions into the chat box at any time, and we'll get to as many as we can. Now, before we kick things off, first, we need to discuss some fine print during this Churchill webinar. Forward-looking statements may be made. I would direct listeners to the company's forward-looking statements disclosure outlined on page two of the Churchill corporate presentation, and that can be found on the company's website, churchillresources.com. For Red Cloud Securities, Inc., I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only. It should not be considered a, a, a solicitation or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. We note that this call does not consider the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigation and seek their own professional advice before investing. And please see our most recent research located on the Red Cloud website for specific disclosures pertaining to Churchill. So we have Churchill presenting today. Churchill is focused on exploration for nickel, as well as other metals that occur with nickel, such as copper, cobalt, and PGMs. Uh, with two projects in Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, one approach to choosing exploration projects is to look for areas where historic work demonstrated at least a showing of mineralization, uh, but now you have the opportunity to bring modern technologies and, and techniques to search for more. And that's the case here with Churchill as both projects had historic showings and some drilling uh, from previous operators and Churchill is advancing the exploration with modern methods. Uh, with that, I now turn it over to Paul to update our audience on the company. Great, thank you very much, Tim, and, and welcome everyone. Um, yeah, so as, as Tim has mentioned, you know, we are an exploration company, and, and I think that's important to keep in mind in that, uh, you know, we are at the exploration phase. We do have two very, very prospective projects that we are extremely encouraged by the results to date on, and uh, looking forward to uh, an exciting 2023. So there is our forward-looking statement. I, I actually edited it for uh, for this presentation because I found it was slightly out of date. So that will be on our website uh, a little later today. The uh, synopsis of the company, if you like, is right here on this first slide. So we have uh, specifically targeted high-grade nickel copper projects. So in that context, we're somewhat different than perhaps um, some of the juniors you might have heard about with very, very large low-grade target models. In our case, it is high-grade that we're looking for, uh, Boise Bay-type target uh, with our Taylor Brook project and a Raglan-type target with Florence Lake, which is our Labrador project. Both of them are in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador, which is a very, very resource-friendly jurisdiction, inviting of, uh, of certainly mining and, uh, and oil and gas uh, production. We ended up there um, primarily because of a relationship with Altius Minerals, which is uh, the leading company in, uh, in uh, Newfoundland Labrador, project generator, as well as a royalty company. They had a portfolio of uh, a nickel sulfide projects. We chose two of them basically to launch Churchill as a public nickel explorer. And uh, the deals with Altius are very, very important to us. We've actually executed on Taylor Brook. We like that project so much that we're moving ahead and uh, made them a major shareholder. And we will follow along with Florence Lake, uh, probably before that date you see there of June of this year. Both projects we're very, very pleased with. Um, and this will make Altius a 19.9% shareholder of Churchill. Currently, they're at about 17%, I believe. They are very, very helpful. They are, they are nickel people to begin with. And uh, of course, they have the, uh, a part of the royalty from Boise's Bay. Um, a lot of help technically, a lot of help with the uh, relationships, with uh, knowing how to work with the, uh, the Newfoundland government and the Nunazi of it government. So, um, you know, a really, a really good partnership. So, um, the company went public in June of 2021, and we've been active since then, basically on uh, on Taylor Brook, a little less so on on Florence Lake, in that we um, we got that one a little later and uh, and are not quite as far along on it. But in both cases, we've had a solid year now and very very um, promising work. 
At Taylor Brook, we have done our own drilling. We have intersected the highest uh, grading intercepts known on the property. And uh, we've really sort of um, come to understand what's actually going on there to a scale that uh, no one else has before. And, and I'll tell you a bit more about that as we move on. But in essence, we've established that there's a very large system there that we have to evaluate and uh, you know, look for Boise Bay or, or Tamarack style mineralization within this intrusive body. Florence Lake is a more volcanic hosted style of, uh, of mineralization there, very similar to Raglan or in Western Australia. And there we've completed uh, airborne geophysics and follow-up soil geochem. And that is, uh, as it says there, has generated at least 12 new targets. And these are over and above what, what was already known on the prospect and what had been drilled by Falconbridge in the past. So uh, both projects look very, very good from a nickel perspective. The company still has two diamond projects, which was what we formed the company on back in 2014. These are both very prospective and we are hoping to do something corporately with them during this, this year. The team is uh, myself and a couple of other experienced uh, geologists, a couple of finance people that I'll tell you about later, and then uh, two uh, local experts on uh, Newfoundland and Labrador Nickel, Don Evans Lambswood, who was with, um, um, what was his name? Diamond Fields, sorry, Diamond Fields, right from the beginning at Voises Bay, and Dr. Derek Wilton, who was at Memorial University up until a couple of years ago. So these are our two local experts and uh, extremely, extremely important to our, our undertaking here. The company, we, uh, we looked like this in January. We're, um, we have slightly less money, I would say, than uh, the 1.2 million there. We're probably down just below a million I think we're trading at seven cents today, which is, uh, you know, which is frustrating. But uh, we're not alone in the in the, in this situation of undervalued uh, nickel juniors. Um, and our uh, share capital looks uh, as that pie graph there that you can see. So Altius, about eighteen percent, um, good institutional shareholder base. Uh, insiders still at about 11%, um, you know, so we are all very, very vested in this, in this enterprise. The two projects now. So Taylor Brook is on the island of Newfoundland, the big rock as they call it in Western Newfoundland, just north of the Deer Lake airport, which is the, um, the airport that uh, is used by tourists going to, to Gross Morn. So a big airport, direct uh, flights from Toronto, which is very, very nice for myself. And, and others. And then Florence Lake is up in Labrador. It's about midway between the big town of Happy Valley Goose Bay and uh, the Voises Bay mine. It's very close to two towns, which is very helpful, and to Tidewater, which uh, can be very, very helpful in, in the past. And, you know, Newfoundland and Labrador, this is a mining uh, jurisdiction. There are a number of mines on the, on, in the uh, province. The big ones, of course, are the iron ore mines at, uh, at Wabash Lab City and at Voises Bay, and of course, uh, Valle Inco has built uh, the world's most modern uh, metallurgical processing plant for nickel, copper, cobalt on the island and very close to St. John. So it is a, a very, very good jurisdiction for us to be in. The nickel deposits uh, of North America, the, at least the substantial ones, are shown in that little inset map there. And so you can see where we are, and, and these are all uh, around the periphery of the Canadian Shield, and that's exactly where we are geologically as well. So a bit more about the projects. Taylor Brooks, so this was our qualifying transaction. This is the one that we went public on. And as I mentioned, we've established that we have a large Voise Bay type magmatic system here. Um, it's right beside a very, very large layered intrusive called the Taylor Brook Gabbro. And we now feel that these are related we know that they are of the same age, which is a major, major step in understanding the geology. And as I mentioned, we've got some, some good intersections and the, the two I show you there are, uh, are examples of the high grade that we have intersected. Um, really, you know, we know the grade is there and it's a case of, of now trying to find the width to, uh, to result in a substantial, uh, a substantial deposit. Uh, excellent infrastructure, as I'll show you shortly. Uh, 
to date, you know, we spent between three and a half and four million dollars on the project. So, you know, a substantial body of work. And uh, we actually plan um, a smaller program for this year and that we do know exactly where we want to go and what we want to do. And, and that is some deeper drilling beneath that high grade there at, at Leyden and as well really targeting a few new targets along this uh, big structure of which one we're now naming TBS-1 and it's a very substantial gechem anomaly that looks, uh, lo looks very, very promising. Florence Lake, the project up in Labrador, on that one, most of Falconbridge's drilling was on something called the Bakey Showing, which is a, a small, it's probably a deposit, it's just never been put together. But you can see the tenor of nickel mineralization that they got there, extremely good. And uh, what we're doing is we've tackled the entire property with uh, a modern VTEM survey, a helicopter uh, EM survey looking for conductors. And then I think we took about 3,000 soil geochems this summer. And we've established that there's at least a dozen zones that, that look better than Bakey does, actually. So, um, you know, some real enticing targets there. And we'd like to do a larger program up there, um, as you can see, of, uh, of about three and a half million dollars this year. So nickel sulfide deposits, um, you know, I, I think the investing public is becoming more and more aware of these. But the important thing is that the blue ones there are intrusive style of mineralization. So that is Voises Bay, um, Norilsk. Um, some would argue Sudbury, others would say Sudbury is extrusive, but, but the point is, is that A, there isn't very many people at very many places in the world where they occur, but when they do occur, they're generally quite sizable, as you can see by the size of those squares. Extrusive style deposits, so Ragland is a, is a big one. Uh, Western Australia, of course, the Kambalda district is, is really where most of them are found. Um, and then Sudbury, of course, is the, you know, the big mama that was, uh, that was over 100 million tons and is still being mined today. In terms of how they occur, they are different. So um, this schematic here is showing you, uh, you know, a deep, uh, a deep mantle source and conduits coming to surface. Uh, Really, what we're looking for at Taylor Brook, it would be number three or number four. Which, and these are the conduits, and they're actually called sub-horizontal conduits um, in a lot of cases because they are sill-like in, in, in terms of their morphology. And then, of course, Florence Lake, these are actually extrusive nickel deposits. So, so that's up at number seven there. Uh, so that's what we're looking for. And um, if you keep that in mind, then I think our, 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 some of our other slides will make more sense. So this is Taylor Brook. And here what you're seeing is a large breccia system that uh, Tim was on this summer. And it's rusty. It's, uh, it's got low grade mineralization in it. You can see that we have guys out there channel sampling it. Um, and really, it's a sign that you're out on the periphery of, uh, of hopefully something more substantial, one of those true conduits. And uh, that's what we, we now feel we have definitively established. And, uh, you know, that's what we've accomplished during uh, 2021 and 2022. We got started in 2021, but really it was this past year where we really, really established the model and confirmed it. And, uh, and really now um, nowhere to chase. Florence Lake, um, you know, here as I mentioned, we wanna do a larger program um, and that'll be a lot of drilling, mainly drilling. Um, and on both projects, what we're doing presently is writing 43101. So this is needed in that we've been working for, uh, you know, 12 to 18 months on these projects. We've spent a lot of money, we've accomplished a lot. And uh, it's important for us to take this break from exploration and really compile everything and get it into the public domain. So we're hoping to have Florence Lake done towards the end of the month or early in March and Taylor Brook not long thereafter. This is the discovery outcrop at Taylor Brook, uh, which was discovered in the late 90s. And that's Don Evans Lambswood, our structural consultant. And she was there with, with INCO uh, in 2003. And what you can see is that rusty outcrop there has some dark bits and some orangey bits. The dark bits are the more massive sulfide. 
the orange bits would be disseminated sulfides or class of country rock that are caught up in the breccia. And, um, you know, that is essentially those big breccia zones that, that we've seen uh, in the previous picture. We now know how those relate to the more massive sulfides that we've intersected um, at depth. And there you can see the boys' um, uh, channel sampling there. So infrastructure, I mentioned that it's very, very good. So we're just north of the town of Deer Lake, which has the major airport that I mentioned. We're on the Trans-Canada Highway or just off the Trans-Canada Highway. We have good logging road access onto the property and all the areas we want to drill and have been drilling. And really a great camp that's uh, incredibly convenient. It was put in because this power line uh, that you see just east of the property here, it, um, it was built uh, for the Churchill Falls uh, hydroelectric project. And uh, the, the camp has remained and is now being used by ourselves and another mining company actually. <laughs> so very convenient and uh, very well apportioned, which uh, really, really, really helps with our work. Our uh, drillers are based in Deer Lake. Our laboratory, our primary laboratory is Springdale. So a really, really cost-effective exploration project. The exploration model, I mentioned these are called uh, sub-horizontal magma conduits, um, which is a lot of words, but essentially it's a plumbing system. And Voise Bay is probably the best understood one in Canada. And you can see there's two schematic drawings there of, of Voise Bay. One is a section. And Reed Brook is kind of, that's down in the conduit. So that it down, that's one of those uh, plumbing pipes, if you will, that led up to the ovoid zone and then down into Eastern Deeps. Now, both Reed Brook and Eastern Deeps are underground mine now, are underground mines now that the ovoid zone has been... Uh, pretty much exhausted. And you can see the scale as well, is that, um, you know, from the one end of the Reed Brook to the other end of Eastern Deeps is about four kilometers. So this, you know, this sort of shows you that there can be four or five deposits over a length like that. And the other one is that little drawing as I have is uh, of Tamarack and it's it's very similar. Again, this in this case, it's nine or 10 kilometers long. The known deposits are, uh, you know, in the middle of it but they've had lots of sniffs in other places. And we think we have something very similar to these keel-like uh, schematics you see here. And that Leyden, uh, what we initially discovered at Leyden, those breccias are out on the periphery and we have to get into the, uh, you know, into the keel, if you will, or the guts of it in order to hit massive sulfides. And we believe we have done that now. So the geological picture in more detail now. So what we have here, is uh, in the drawing on the right, you can see this big Taylorbrook Gabbro complex. It's about 30 kilometers long, 10 kilometers, 15 kilometers wide. It's right at the edge of the Canadian Shield, and that's why you see in the in the bottom corner there that it, it's sort of cut off. So the Canadian Shield rocks here, they're called the Grenville, and they're about 1.1 billion years or 1,100 million years old, as you can see, whereas the Taylorbrook Gabbro has been dated at 430 million years, much, much younger. And really this Silurian age date of 430 million years is when a lot of the collisions that formed the, uh, the island of Newfoundland happened. So these mobile belts started getting accreted onto the, uh, the Canadian shield. And it's not really uh, out of the realm of, uh, of what one would expect that this big Gabbro complex uh, was intruded as part of that mountain building episode. Now, previous workers had assumed that the mineralization, which was just off out in the Grenville rocks, was actually of Grenvillian age. In other words, it was old, it was small, it was probably all uh, uh, migmatized and uh, amorphosed and, uh, and, and really, um, you know, didn't have any tonnage potential. But the most, one of the most important things we've established is that it does seem to be a much larger body. I'm going to just turn the whiteboard on here and hopefully you can see it. So we now know that the mineralization here and the host rock is 430 million years old, same age as this big gabbro. And we have a body that comes down about like that, that we think is our magma conduit. And I'll hopefully prove that to you in the next few slides. So 
First thing we did is we flew that VTEM survey and we expanded the original property down to the south in order to capture all of the west side of the Taylorbrook Gabbro. And so I'll turn the whiteboard on here. So we, uh, we were very interested in this gravity anomaly. When we flew it, it was very, very intense magnetically. And this is the south lobe of the Taylorbrook Gabbro. The north lobe is magnetically negative, actually, which implies a different age date or a complete differentiation. But, you know, the known mineralization was out here, and it's about 10 kilometers of strike that now came into play. And our VTEM, VTEM data was primarily flown for EM purposes, so we thought we better get better magnetic data to really follow this thing along. The other thing we were very, very interested in was this entire gravity anomaly. And you can see the big red oval there uh, heading down along the edge of the continent. And we got those all licenses from Altius this year uh, because that gravity anomaly suggests there should be other intrusives there. And indeed, in what we call this our Cormac property, we have found a new intrusive down in the, uh, the southwest, uh, you know, not too far from Deer Lake Airport, actually. If you look at the inverted version of our magnetics, um, this is quite instructive in that, you know, what you can see is that we have quite a shallow uh, system of rocks here. And this is what we call our latent intrusive. It's very, very shallow. Here you can see the Grenville. Here you can see the uh, Taylor Brook Gabbro, very, very deep. And of course, out into the Canadian Shield, extremely deep. So the fact that this is shallow and, and rather horizontal, again, gives us the analogy to Voise Bay or Tamarack where, uh, you know, the, the sulfide deposits form at the bottom as they should. And we just basically have to find our bottom. Um, Leyden is up in the north end there, you can see, and our new TBS1 uh, geochem anomaly about halfway down. So this is our new mag now, and it made a profound difference. So on the left, you're seeing our new mag. And what is important is how linear this magnetic feature is here. The Grenville rocks have a sinuous um, morphology to them. They're following folds and, and other structures, whereas our rock is truly intrusive. We've now sampled it. Um, over about five kilometers and age dated it. And it is of the same composition. It's a gabbro norite, exactly the same as that Leyden. And it's the same age. So this is very, very important that it's implying a big, you know, essentially that we've got a big plumbing system that includes at least the south lobe of the Taylorbrook gabbro and comes all the way up here to Leyden where we've drilled. And TBS1 where we have soil anomalies that exceed anything known before. So quite exciting. Um, the other thing I'm showing you here is this is just a uh, time domain EM surface work that we did at Leyden. And we have an anomaly that essentially goes out under our uh, known drilling and uh, is quite compelling. That is a, you know, a drill target for this year. Oh, I'm gonna turn the whiteboard off here. Now this is our geochem. And on the left, what you're seeing is a schematic and our nickel results. So you can see the latent intrusive area. And although it kicked in nickel, it wasn't substantial. Whereas down at TBS1, and it's right along that same trend that I talk about so much, um, a whopper anomaly. Uh, two samples there exceeded 500 ppm nickel. It basically means, you know, mineralization is coming to surface which is a good starting point for us. And so we did get line cutting done uh, before the snow came uh, and we'll be back in there, uh, you know, this spring. The soil sampling has stopped just past TBS1. That's as far as we got. You can see all our, our soil samples in that uh, schematic there. And so really, you know, my plan is that this spring, we're gonna be really tackling the area from here, just past TBS1, all the way down into the south lobe, you know, um, whoops, I didn't mean to draw that, sorry. Uh, and uh, that will be soil geochem, which is working very, very nicely, as you can see, prospecting, 
and actually, um, my board wanted to know where I would drill a hole if I was just going to drill a hole. And, and that's what I'm showing here. Um, and that's because, you know, we've sampled to this point here, this little lake in the uh, Taylorbrook Gabbro South Lobe. And we got a neuritic rock. So norite is, you know, more mafic than Gabbro norite. Uh, it does suggest that we're into a differentiated intrusive and it's extremely magnetic down here. So the road is right there and I'm just saying, well, if we were to drill a long hole, like a thousand meters, that would be the spot, you know, and that's, that's something that we'll consider for sure, because, you know, our drilling costs are quite cheap in this, uh, in this setting. So as I mentioned, the geochem is working really well and we'll continue with it. We have great access roads uh, on both sides of the river. And now for the drilling we did. So we've drilled now something like 8,000 meters at Leyden and really established that our gabbronorite body where it outcrops here is, uh, it's been squeezed. It's, uh, it's now more of an elongate uh, morphology. It's lost its original shape. And we have about eight to 10 very good intersections. Um, they tend to be a little bit better in grade once we get into the gabbro norite. This dike-like body here, thinner, um, but still some good, good, good grades. And then some very good ones here and at the Leyden showing, of course, good mineralization on surface. The breccia system is all up here and it's making us think that, you know, this has got to be getting into the keel here and this is the peripheral stuff up there. This uh, exam or this drone sh shot of our uh, our stripping is actually quite neat because there's the breccia system that I was showing you. I'm going to turn on the whiteboard again. There's the breccia system, um, and you can see folding along it. But what you're also seeing, and I've put in with this white line, is a fault, and the fault is moving things in a left lateral uh, displacement. Between uh, 15 and 20 meters, we believe, such that, you know, the laden mineralization you see at the laden showing is actually up in the trees uh, beyond, uh, beyond the road in this picture. So, you know, there is deformation in terms of folding and faulting, but it's, it all kind of hangs together, and, and that's very important. So this is our work in progress geological model and uh, on the left, and what you're seeing here and again, I'm turning on the whiteboard, is the red is our, what we call our, our laden mineralization. The dark red is the high grade. The light red is the, is the low grade. But it hangs together as a discrete body. And there's areas that we have not drilled yet, and that's what I'm showing in red. And so these are the areas where we believe that the high grade should be concentrated. And we really um, are excited to get back there this spring. We could have drilled through the winter, but, you know, it is, as I mentioned, we wanted to get these 43 101s done. We want to finalize things like this and make sure, you know, the team is all aligned and that this is exactly what we should be doing. But um, the section on the right here, again, it's showing you the same thing. And the, and the two holes that we have to drill, for instance, um, this hole here was trying to hit this little conductor and we know that when we hit the 500 and above Siemens conductors that we do get massive sulfides so you know it missed um, and we have very little drilling the, the schematic is kind of making it look like we have more drilling in this area than we do but um, in point of fact these are big holes and uh, they all sit in here and here and that is the area where this keel and the better mineralization should be better developed. So Taylor Brook, a summary, you know, great infrastructure. It's close to an airport, close to the highways, close to uh, ports, close to power. And of course, one thing I didn't mention is that Newfoundland is a, a source of mining personnel all over North America and Canada. And, uh, you know, these people would love to, to have a mine uh, closer to home. So they didn't have to get on a plane and, and do uh, rotation work. So um, you can see some of my happy uh, prospectors there channel sampling the high grade, um, you know, and then in terms of the geological setting, it's, you know, it has everything 
a nickel uh, area should have. And thus far, all of our results have been positive. And it's really a case of, you know, persevering and, and continuing on and building off what we've accomplished. So that was Taylor Brook, Florence Lake. Now, this is the property up in Labrador. It is helicopter accessible only. Um, it's about uh, 70 kilometers from the, the nearest community called Postville. And uh, you can see uh, myself and Lawrence Winter of Altius examining one of the showings last year. This is an ex Falconbridge property. So, you know, it was Falconbridge Nickel that explored it. They liked it um, in the early 90s, uh, but really Raglan took precedence in that Raglan was kind of a slam dunk from the, from the second they, uh, they discovered it. So a bit on the infrastructure here, Postville, as I mentioned, 70 kilometers to the project, uh, weekly ferry service up from Goose Bay. So you can truly drive to Postville from Goose Bay. Uh, the ferry goes north at the beginning of the week and south from uh, Nain at the end of the week. So we use that extensively for personnel and equipment. The community has, I think, about 500 people in it. It has an airport, which is very important, daily flights. And we based all of our, uh, you know, all of our helicopter work, both the geophysics and the sampling uh, out of that airstrip there. We have two blocks to the property, the Florence Lake block and the Seahorse block. We have flown the Florence Lake block, uh, but not the Seahorse Lake block as yet. That just didn't happen due to um, a myriad of delays uh, with the contractor last year. The geology here, so I mentioned we're in a, a volcanic terrain and these are three billion year old uh, volcanics. Um, and Falconbridge essentially discovered six nickel showings within them, as you can see, and this is on our Florence Lake block. And uh, they established that there was ultramafic volcanics and ultramafic intrusives and the intrusives are the purple lines you're seeing here. <coughs> and they drilled about um, 46 holes, actually, excuse me, I'm just getting a bit dry. Uh, the belt is more extensive, as you can see on the left, there are several other sub belts and a company called Labrador Gold controls most of it and, uh, you know, is, and is doing some good work in terms of uh, assessing the gold potential. We have most of the nickel potential, I would say. We were out there, uh, well, two summers ago now doing due diligence and uh, we found the old core, we resampled the old core, we got ex excellent results, uh, duplicated or exceeded the Falcon Bridge uh, results previously. And, uh, you know, the core is still available for us to do further work. Some of it's in Goose Bay and some of it's in the field and this will be our campsite. This is Falcon Bridge's old campsite where we're working here and uh, a really, really nice spot, just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. On the left, that photo is showing you what the outcrop looks like. There isn't a lot of volcanic outcrop. It's uh, because it's a very soft rock, it's been weathered away, but it's an easy working environment. And the guys made great progress on uh, the soil geochem work. Uh, on the right here is what you're seeing is our mag that came with the VTEM. And as well, it's very, very difficult for you to see. If I could zoom in, I would show you that there's uh, conductor profiles on top of the mag there. So the really, really intense mag is showing our ultramafic bodies, volcanics and intrusives, and then all of these little squiggles. This is the um, the EM profiles. And, and I guess the basic point is that we, we just got a lot more of it than, um, you know, than had been previously seen. Here we're showing it on top of the geology. And what's interesting is a couple of things. Number one is that, you know, I did mention that we were, we got a lot of it and we got it in places where Falconbridge doesn't have showings or hasn't drilled yet. But as well, we have it up in what is supposed to be um, a different uh, series of volcanic rocks. Um, and, you know, these have not been explored at all. In fact, an awful lot of what um, we're looking at hasn't been explored at all. At Bakey, for instance, where Falconbridge has done the majority of their drilling, we got a few conductors and I'll turn the whiteboard on here again. But, you know, these are our conductor trends. So we, the Bakey showing is right here and you can see all of Falcon Bridge's drilling. Um, but we have conductors in places that have never been drilled. And, you know, this is very, very encouraging to us. And, um, 
in a larger context, what's what's really neat is uh, so this is the Florence Lake block, and these are our nickel results. So about three thousand soil samples, and at Bakey we got this amazing result, a one percent nickel that we actually put out in a press release. But down here, for instance, this sample 061, 0.16% nickel is, uh, you know, a very, very high soil sample. It's never been drilled, never really been explored by Falcon Bridge. In fact, most of these anomalies that I show you, they weren't touched on by Falcon Bridge. So we are starting fresh here. And, uh, you know, that's what makes it so exciting. The uh, southern block, which we haven't had the chance to fly a, a VTEM survey yet, but we will this spring. Uh, this is historical soil sampling, and that's what you're seeing on the left. And again, that 500 ppm nickel threshold is very, very high, suggesting nickel mineralization comes to surface. And you can see there's two zones on our southern block as well, where ultramafics are known, uh, overburdens deeper on the southern block, so there really isn't any outcrop, but um, the soil geochem down there is very encouraging as well. So we'll hit the southern block, uh, you know, hard this summer, uh, but we will be drilling at, um, on the Florence Lake block for sure, uh, later in the summer, all going well. And the camp that, uh, that I mentioned, that site is right here, down on Florence Lake, um, a very, very convenient spot for float planes and, uh, and helicopters in terms of supply. We're presently building a geological model of Bakey, so I don't have it to show you yet. But this is what was done previously, and it's essentially showing the high-grade intersections are the big disks. And, you know, Falcon Bridge was able to follow it down to about 70, 80, 90 meters, but then they lost it. And... Uh, we think that you know our better geophysics, our very very detailed geophysics. We flew at 50 meter line spacing, is going to help us in terms of understanding the structure, and uh, and following this to uh, to greater depth. And then I was showing you that we have other conductors away from Bakey, you know that uh, that really really are quite exciting. The board, I mentioned it's, uh, it's myself, so I have a consulting background with a company called MPH. Um, a lot of diamond, a lot of nickel experience in my past, uh, but I have wound up MPH in order to, to run Churchill. So Churchill's my full-time uh, full uh, employment. The, uh, the team, the technical team, I mentioned Dr. Derek Wilton, Don evans Lamsud, and also Jeremy Brett, our geophysicist. He was with me at MPH for a number of years he did all the work at Eagle's Nest up in um, in uh, the Ring of Fire. So really, really understands the exploration model and extremely helpful in what we're doing. Two other geos on the board, Bill Fisher, you know, very, very well known. He's actually involved with nickel presently because he's chairman of Horizonte, which is uh, building a nickel mine in Brazil. Kevin Tomlinson, again, a, a geologist by background, more of a finance guy. Um, most recently chairman of Cardinal Resources, which uh, was a big takeover by the Chinese uh, last year. And then Jesse Liu Ernsting, very, very well-known uh, mining professional here in, the, in Toronto. And she's presently director of investor relations for G Mining. Paul Robertson, our CFO, very experienced uh, junior company CFO. So um, hopefully I've convinced you that we're on to, to something good here with our, our two projects. You know, um, I don't have to tell you about the tremendous demand for nickel. I'm sure everybody is, is waking up to that. But at Taylor Brook, you know, I think the most important things we've done is we've generated that or we've confirmed that massive sulfides do exist and that they are of high grade. And, you know, it's really going to be a case of drilling beneath the high grade at Leyden and evaluating new targets during 2023 um, and moving down to that great big, uh, very, very magnetic Taylor Brook Gabbro. Florence Lake, you know, here uh, we want to do a bit more geophysics, as I've mentioned. But as well, I mean, we have shipped everything up we, we need to start building our camp in uh, the late spring uh, to be drilling in, uh, you know, hopefully midsummer. Um, and with that, I guess the only other thing I would just say is that, you know, um, the two diamond projects, Pelly Bay and White River, extremely good. 
Um, obviously, the sector is uh, it still hasn't recovered from uh, you know um, from COVID and, and various other things. But you know, Canada's diamond mines are quickly quickly reaching their end. Um, Diavik is almost almost over. Ikati not that far behind. Even um, you know Gechikwe isn't that big a project. So we do think that our diamond projects are going to have their day. We already have diamondiferous kimberlites on them. So, uh, you know, we continue to uh, to beat the bushes, if you will, in order to uh, to add some value to Churchill with those two projects. And Tim, I think I'll stop there And that. Yeah, that is the end. Great. All right. Well, thank you, Paul, for a very informative presentation. Uh, we will now start the Q&A portion of the webinar. A reminder to everyone on the line that you could submit your questions uh, through the chat box at any time. Uh, we already do have a, a couple of questions. Um, first, in the inverted TMI 3D model, the ver mm -hmm. vertical axis seemed to be 400 meters. How deep do you think the mineralization would be? A very good question. So, we are um, updating that inversion, first of all, with the latest uh, HeliGT uh, data that you saw in my very, very detailed magnetic presentation. But I think, you know, that sort of 400 to 500 meter range is, is our absolute deepest in terms of how the rocks model presently. Um, in fact, the rocks disappear at that depth. So the mineralization, which should be interior to the to, to the host rock um, can't be much deeper than that you know so it seems to be that it's a little bit deeper than how deep vtem sees and that we've only seen um, vtem anomalies at the laden area uh, but probably not much deeper than that so you know vtem sees to about 150 meters we're probably in that 150 to 400 meter range if i if i had to guess okay great and kind of following up on that, uh, what have you learned from drilling thus far that would help you uh, target uh, further drilling at, at Taylor Brook to, to hone in on that uh, buried target? Right. Well, um, if you remember my, uh, my cartoon plan map there, it, it's very obvious that the massive sulfides and the next te net textured sulfides are in the the southern part of that uh, that intrusive. So um, that implies that that is the keel. And as we move further to the south, it means that the western side of, uh, of the intrusion should be the keel. Now, Mother Nature's never that simple. Uh, we know that there's faulting. We know that there's folding. Um, but it does make a lot of sense. And certainly that TBS-1 nickel anomaly, it is on the west side of that linear intrusion. Um, so it gives me hope that we actually have figured it out. But as I mentioned, um, it's sure to be a little bit more complicated than that. Okay, great. Um, and what are some specific targets that you would uh, look to drill uh, next? Um, at Florence Lake, if the question is, is Florence Lake, it's a bit early for me to say, um, you know, we are compiling all of that. We were, um, so we're marrying all of the historical exploration and, and government um, surveys with each of those target areas that I, that I showed in that slide with the 12 target areas. Um, to say that, you know, target three is a drill, is a drill target and target four isn't, um, it's premature for me to say that, but we are at this point thinking that all of them weren't drilling and, and certainly a better, uh, a better um, attack at Bakey is also warranted given the, the tenor of mineralization that's there. At Taylor Brook, um, I did have a slide in there that said, you know, we'd like to drill 2,500 more meters at Leyden, and that would be specifically going deep down to the bottom of the intrusion to see whether massive sulfides truly pool in that setting. And then reserve 2,500 meters for other targets, including TBS-1, along the intrusion. Great. And you did mention um, that you'd had some geochemical sampling uh, and that had uh, some positive results at Taylor Brook. And, and 
and on the new, newly or more recently acquired Taylor Burke South uh, ground. Can you tell us a bit more about what you found and what follow-up work you would love to do? Yeah, well, we um, so the slides that I was showing the um, the soil sampling at Taylor Brook. You might have noted that it was uh, it was quite dense soil sampling. Um, we were sampling on 100 meter lines and then 25 meter stations over the intrusion itself. So a corridor of 25 meter stations that was about four or 500 meters in width over to the river, basically. Um, and that was intentional to be that detailed because you know, we do know that there's folding going on. We do know that there's faulting and offsets. And we really did want the soil geochem to not only find us other places where nickel mineralization might be outcropping, but as well help to map the rock. And um, it's really, you saw that there was a nickel corridor basically that, that lined up very, very nicely with the magnetics. Um, and I want to continue that all the way to the south. There's another five kilometers down to the Taylor Brook Gabbro. And, um, you know, that's that's what we're learning is that it, it a it can help us map um, as much as help us find mineralization. Now, we're very, very, you know, you're always hopeful that more mineralization will come to surface. But really, as as, as we've seen at Leyden, I mean, the best, best mineralization didn't come to surface, you know, so um, it's up to us now to uh, to use every little um, area of of encouragement uh, as a as a station to learn more. Maybe it means that we trench. Tim saw firsthand how valuable stripping and trenching was. Um, and if the area is amenable to that, then that's a very, very cheap, fast way to learn about the rocks. If we have to drill a hole, then that hole becomes a platform for borehole EM, for more drilling, this sort of thing. So, um, you know, that's, that's why soil geochem is really really helpful if um you know if the uh, environment is effective for it so uh, so we've learned a lot and we will continue to do that the um the total cost including analytical and guys and accommodation and food and and vehicles and all that it's less than a hundred dollars a sample for us so it's very very cost effective exploration mm -hmm. florence lake it's two hundred dollars a sample even though hel helicopters support it so again you know very very cost effective work Um, and a couple of questions here more on the corporate side, but yeah. any concern on raising funds in this environment without diluting too much? Well, obviously it's a big concern. Um, you know, we're hopeful that we can get, garner some momentum between this webinar and the Red Cloud Conf pre Predac conference, get our story out. It is more mature than it was certainly before Christmas. Um, technical people do seem to realize and appreciate that we're on to something good here. Um, we are in discussions with a couple of the majors and they've requested that we circle back as we get our ducks in a row. You know, so all of this is hopeful. Uh, I'm hopeful that it does create some momentum, uh, does create some share price appreciation and, and makes the next uh, fundraising less dilutive. But you know, bottom line is, as you've seen, is I'd like to get $5 million to really accomplish what needs to be done on these uh, these two projects. And, um, you know, we're going to get there some way. Okay. And as a follow up, uh, we've recently seen um, companies like Weilu and BHP come in and in investing in projects or, or acquisitions. And also recently, Anglo-American came in as yeah. a strategic yeah. investor, CNC. Would you also look to bring in a strategic investor or, or a partner? Absolutely, that, that's a, a very important part of what we're doing. So uh, through Red Cloud in August of last year, we presented to nine or 10 of the nickel majors around the world. Three or four of those have come back to us uh, with, with positive feedback and would like to, uh, to learn more. Um, we were actually finalists in the BHP Explorer um, competition and we're reconnecting with them in terms of just a traditional uh, mining deal sort of uh, negotiations uh, and due diligence on their part. Um, you know, we, we didn't come in with a with a real concept for B, BHP Explorer. They just liked our projects and, and I told them what I would do with their money. And if I had come in with a real conceptual idea, we probably would have uh, would have made the cut. But um, 
BHP and Wilo are two of the companies that we are still in discussions with. So, so yes, absolutely, a strategic investor I think would would go a long way in terms of helping our story. Great. Great. Well, I think that's all the questions we have. Okay. Um, I would like to thank Paul Sobe for presenting today. And thank you, everyone on the line for tuning in. Uh, a reminder that Red Cloud Securities will be back tomorrow morning when our webinar series continues with Titan Minerals presenting uh, Wednesday, uh, February 22nd at uh, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, everybody.